would you want to be in a neighborhood and you have to look at this every day that I have to pass by and go over this to my destination of where I need to go? Back then when that controversy, whatever so took place, Robert Bob led me to believe and other parents to believe that the school, Bernie, which we're talking about, would be able to stay open if we can get enough parents to be able to bring their children over here to Bernie to where we were out, you know, we had um, paper, petition, and flyers and stuff out to be able to get the parents to sign and have them come here. But I believe in my heart all the time that Robert Bob knew that he was going to close the school and it didn't matter you know, about us getting the petitions, whatever sold to be signed. Uh, in office uh, uh, at that time, uh, when the first list of closings were announced and Bernie was on that list of closings, uh, one of the things that we wanted to try to do from Lansing was to uh, contact uh, Rob Bob directly and uh, try to see if I could utilize some uh, of my uh, input uh, with him to be able to uh, not have him to close the school. Well, uh, he indicated to me that all of the schools that were on the list were going to be given an opportunity to make a presentation so that they could, uh, in fact, keep themselves uh, uh, open. And that it required, um, and it was going to require uh, that they were able to uh, add students uh, and, and increase the enrollment. The problem with the uh, public schools uh, in Detroit is that they're, they've lost so many students, 50,000 students. And because of the fact that these students have gone uh, on to charter schools and some even out of the, the state, uh, it has uh, placed us in a situation where you have more students than you have, I mean, more buildings than you have students. And that's a problem because then uh, it, it's wasting money uh, and adding to the deficit. And the deficit for the board is $327 million. And so decisions had to be made about downsizing uh, the uh, number of schools uh, that the uh, Board of Education had. Can you tell us exactly what school Bernie Elementary students were sent to? Some other students were sent over to Dur majority of the kids were sent over to Durfee Elementary School. Middle, excuse me, middle school. So is that to, K through eight? Yes, it's K through eight, but then it's overcrowded. It's overcrowded to where you could have um, had some students to come from Durfee and had some children to come from Winter Heart to, and merge them over here at Bernie Elementary to make up the shortage of which you were talking about to keep the school open. And that was very disheartening. Why would you, you know, cram the schools and then the kids are not going to get the proper education and all of them may not learn at the same level. And because students have moved, some schools have enough students to justify keeping it open and some schools simply do not and the area in which they are in is a depressed area where getting students to come to the school uh, will be a difficult task if not an impossible one. This school, Bernie, is one of the, was one of the better schools in the system and that's why I stepped in and asked uh, Rob Bob, the emergency financial manager, to do whatever we could to keep that building open. Obviously, uh, there was not a whole heck of a lot that could be done and the building was shut down. And I think it's a tragedy because there are some, you know, uh, things that happen in the neighborhood where the schools are closed. Uh, and, and all you have to do is look around you, you can see that. Because these schools have, uh, the schools closed, we've ended up with uh, abandoned homes uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, there's no reason that people feel that they should continue to stay. Schools are important to the stability, stability of a neighborhood. And if you don't have that, then it becomes difficult to keep, more difficult to keep a neighborhood stable. We talk about the no left behind policy, whatever so for the children, but how many children are being left behind, behind that decision? I think Bernie was one of those schools that made AYP. It, it did well, uh, but uh, the other problem was that there weren't enough students in the neighborhood to justify keeping the building open, according to them. Now, I think with a little creativity, we probably would have been able to do so. I, I'm sure that the former principal and others uh, who were involved in this process felt that they could have had something to do with keeping it open, and it was a valiant fight to try to keep it open. And uh, it, did not, it did not work. 
I went to house to house along with other volunteer with other soil parents to get the petition to you know to keep it open to talk to them to let them know that they could be secure and that Bernie is a, and was a school that they could feel comfortable with their children being at. You know, it's not big, they would have the proper education. So we said to go from door to door and I would do it again to be able to, um, to have our children whatever so to come here. And it's still disheartening. It's disheartening to me right now to talk about it. And it's years later. And I don't approve of my son being where he at when I know what kind of education he still could have had here at Bernie Elementary School. Uh, but I look at it this way. Um, we have a school system in uh, the city that's in trouble financially. When I look across the rest of the state, uh, at the time uh, in December of uh, 09, uh, and we started looking at how we could, you know, deal with this. By December of 010, uh, we have ended up with, uh, if I remember correctly, we had something like um, 42 school districts that were uh, about bankrupt uh, throughout the state of Michigan. So the whole issue is about public education and the financing of public education and what is happening um, uh, with that so that we end up with all of these doggone schools in, in the desperate trouble that they have. Uh, Proposition A and the Headley Amendment are both working together to kind of stifle uh, property uh, school, school funding and the f school funding is really the big issue here. What is the state of Michigan going to do to solidify school funding period in the entire state where we don't end up in deficit situations like we do here in Detroit which necessitates the closing of schools. We have a school here with, like I said, with a building that was in good condition that didn't need any work or money invested to it, that if it would have stayed open at that um, time, then it would still be in good condition. And now, the building is basically gone to waste. It's not utilized, and you know, they done trashed it and vandalized it, and what for? And a building is going to waste, and it didn't have to go to waste. Would you give him a passing grade? If you were to grade his um, job effectiveness here in the city of Detroit, would he get a passing grade from Ms. Sherry? No, not for me, I wouldn't give him a passing grade because I don't see anything that progressed where he done been effective in what it is that, that he has done, as far as my opinion. So if it was for me to grade him, it wouldn't be of a passing grade. Because we still we will say, which I reiterate once again, that it's the no left no children left behind, but a lot of children are left behind. So to that point of to saying to give him a passing grade, no I wouldn't because it's too many children left behind, but not saying that it's all Rob Bob's fault. We want to keep as many schools open as we can, but they also have to be schools in which parents and teachers participate and where education can be gotten and it be excellent because we do need to make sure that our children in our neighborhoods have an equal access to education and an equal opportunity to be able to go on to college and be all that they can be.